Hey everybody, welcome to Rehab. Welcome to the first official blog post of Rehab Soul. Rehab is an acronym. It stands for Restoring Every Hurt and Broken Soul. And this is where we'll talk about how it is always God's desire for us to be restored from the tough things we go through in life. We all at some point will go through difficult things that can leave us worn out, hurt, and even broken. But by the power of God, our creator, restoration is possible and restoration can be our reality. So since this is the first official post, I thought I would start by asking the question that we are often asked when we meet or greet someone. How is everyone? How are you doing? And we answer that question with a good or a fine a lot of times. And I think because we're asked that question so often uh, that we respond a lot of times without even thinking about how we're doing. But I'm going to ask again and just take five to ten seconds to check in with yourself. Try to get a sense of what's going on in your thoughts. Is your mind calm? Is it focused? Is it chaotic? Um, where are you at emotionally? What is the overall state of your life? Uh, what's going on in your health, in your career, in your family, in your friendships, in your relationships? How are you doing? And it's a complicated question, right? Because all of those things get taken into account when it comes to how we are really doing. It's never just dependent on one thing. And life is such that always at the same time, we have things going on that feel good, things that are enjoyable. And then there are things that we're dissatisfied with, things that we want to see improved. Um, things that we're just unhappy about, even if it's not in our personal lives, just in the world around us. And those things, they affect how we're doing. And then there's, you know, those times, those seasons in life that mm, we go through things that are just downright painful and we feel like we're in despair. Um, so maybe, you know, right now you can answer that question and say, I'm doing great right now. But then at the same time, there's someone that's answering that question. They're saying, I'm struggling. I'm not doing well at all. And that's life. <laughs> the good and the bad. The things we're happy about and the things that we wish just weren't so. And those things are all running parallel to one another and happening at the same time. Not even just from person to person, but in our own personal lives. We can be doing excellent on one hand. And on the other hand, we can really be in need of some serious healing or encouragement or change. It can be a very true statement to say, I'm doing okay, even though everything isn't exactly what I would have it to be if it were up to me. So let's rehab it, okay? Let's rehab the question, how are you doing? And there's two reasons that we need to rehab this question. The first reason is because it's a question we should never answer on autopilot. We should always answer this question mindfully and honestly. Why? <laughs> because how you're doing matters. Because you matter. <laughs> Honestly, if it doesn't matter to anyone else, which it does, but if you think you don't have a person in the world who cares about how you're doing, God cares how you're doing. And I care. That's why I'm here. How you're doing, it really matters. And I'm not suggesting that every time someone asks how you're doing, um, that we should just go down the list of every personal problem we're having and give them every detail of our lives of course not some things just are not everyone's business and the fact is most people in our lives are not close enough to us um, to be trusted with the most private details of our lives and our personal problems but i am saying um, that we should ask ourselves that question regularly and when someone asks us how we're doing, whether we answer them with total transparency or not, we should always know how we're doing. 
is so important because if we don't know how we're doing, then we don't have the best handle on the things that really matter in life. You cannot make the most out of your today or your tomorrow. I cannot if we don't know what's working in our lives and what isn't working. And when you're doing well, it's important to note those things so that you can continue in them and continue to do the things that are moving your life forward in a healthy way, like keeping good habits and being responsible and nourishing those good relationships in your life, right? And then on the other hand, when you're not doing well, when things are not going well, you have to take inventory of the fact that you're in need of healing and rest. And how do you seek or pursue restoration if you don't know how you're doing? If your relationships are not doing well and you never take the time to assess that, how do you get to a point where you can deal with the issues that maybe you're causing or that others are causing you? Um, knowing how you're doing also prompts you to change. It's when you can put yourself in the position to say, I'm not satisfied with things because I shouldn't be. I deserve better and I'm going to move my direction, the direction of my life uh, in the direction of better. So um, that's one reason. The second reason that you need to know how you're doing is because you're the only person in the world who has control over the quality of life that you live. The ups and downs are inevitable, right? Like we can't control that. But we have full control over how we perceive those things, the ups and downs, and how we respond to those things. It was maybe 10 years ago or so, I had to think back that I started doing like a wake up check on myself. So every day when I wake up, in that first minute or two of being awake, um, I thank God for another day and I take a moment just to get a sense of myself. How do I feel right now? Um, what are my thoughts? What's happening in my mind right now? And um, where am I at emotionally? It's become an important thing to do because those first moments really set the tone for my day. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you ever wake up like Grumpy Dwarf, right? <laughs> you know, from, from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, right? You wake up, nothing has happened yet, but you're just in a bad mood. You wake up like, I don't feel like it today maybe it's just me <laughs> or maybe not right like if we're honest but why would i approach my day like that it's so easy to just let the day be what it will be right but that's not always what's best what's best on those days is for the mindfulness and the honesty to kick in to ask ourselves how are we doing did something happen the day before that I need to deal with in order to take my day back and take my joy back for the day? Or did I just not get enough rest? Or do I even know what's wrong or why I feel irritated or weighed down today? If not, then that's something that I'm going to take with me into my morning prayer time and I hope that God will reveal it to me. But the bottom line is, I will not let my day be ruined from the time I wake up <laughs> because the day is not the problem, right? I will find a reason to be grateful for the day. I'm breathing, it is cold outside, but my inside, the inside of my home is warm. Um, I have enough sense to know what day it is. I will not let life tell me I am not doing well. I will get out of that bed and I will handle the day. <laughs> handle the day. Okay, I like that. Coming soon to Rehab Soul. <laughs> this is how it works when you're a writer. Everything turns into something else to be written about, right? So look forward to seeing Handle the Day soon on <laughs> Rehab Soul. But um, anyway, <laughs> I can tell you from experience, though, the more often that you make that decision, the easier it becomes to make that decision more often, to decide how the day is gonna go. Like take a minute to sort things out before you get out of the bed and just be okay, be good, because it really is a choice. And sometimes you have to talk yourself into it, right? But you really can talk yourself into it. We have a lot of say over how we are doing, and I can prove it. So I was thinking, I know a lot of people who are going through some tough things 
terminal illnesses where there is no direct diagnosis or cure, chemotherapy, grief from burying their children and their spouses. Some have marriages that are in shreds, right? But I see these same people make the choice each day to live in joy and appreciate the gift of life even though they're honest about where they are and they may shed tears and even have to pick up the phone and call me, call somebody and say, will you please pray for me? I'm having a moment. But when we hang up that phone, I watch them say, I'm going to get up. Let me keep on living. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be okay. Life is still good. And I think back to what could have been one of the worst times in my life as a homeless single mother. And my daughter was not young, y'all. She was 13. She was very aware of our situation and my shortcoming. And we weren't homeless for a day or two, not even for a week or two. We were homeless. We were living in a homeless shelter for a couple of months. And even though I felt the weight of or the reality of the failure and the discouragement right like thinking the least i should be able to do is provide a roof <laughs> for my child but every day i had a choice i could let that situation and the feelings of that situation control me or i could decide to be okay and choose joy and choose hope and perseverance toward making each day the best that it could be, even in a shelter, knowing, hoping that there will be a time when I would get through it and see the end of it. Um, and I share that because I want you to know, regardless of wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life, the hard things always have an expiration date. And yes, for some, for the one with a terminal illness or the one who knows their loved one, will never get up again. That expiration date may literally be the end of their life. Um, but how, how you're doing today is, it's up to you, it's up to us, it's a choice. God gave us that freedom and he gave us that right to choose how we're doing and no one can take it from us. We can decide um, that we're doing okay and be grateful that we're alive to even answer the question, how are you doing? And realize that we have a reason to be optimistic in every situation. Um, so if I could just also take 30 more seconds to say, if you're doing well, like check in on someone who may not be doing so well, you know, check on someone who may be having anxiety during COVID or, um, living in isolation because that's not easy for everyone um let's rehab it y'all like let's make it a better situation than what it is just on its own because we do have the ability to choose and to decide every single day how we are doing so um god bless you thank you for tuning in to rehab soul and um take care Bye.